Hello and welcome back to another guide to Check the Lines 3. My name is Saiken. I do a lot of guides and typically they are concise, to the point, no repetition, no bullshit. I'll try to do the same with today's guide, which is all around the mercenaries and their individual advantages and disadvantages. We're going to go tier by tier and shortly talk about the mercenaries. I will keep it brief because there are quite a few mercenaries and then I'll show you a great spreadsheet for your personal build uh, that will determine whether or not uh, you want to hire certain mercenaries. Let's talk about sport composition in Jack the Lions to begin with and then we're jumping into the mercenaries individually. Squads in uh, Jack the Lions can, up, uh, can hold up to six individuals. Uh, typically you want to have distinct roles. Balanced squads are performing better than uh, mono role squads and you would want to have at least one character in a squad uh, that has a mechanical ability to modify your weapons and remove traps. You want one character that has explosives in order to uh, remove explosives traps as well as use actual explosives and you would want to have all of the characters to have at least a little bit of medical uh, skill. The way that you can get that is by hiring a specific mercenary and uh, training um, all of the other mercenaries so that they get up to 30 medical um, skill and are from there on more or less self-sufficient. Uh, um, of course it helps to have a dedicated medical character but it is by no means re uh, as required as the mechanical and explosive stuff. Uh, when it comes to the other important abilities, uh, marksmanship is potentially the key ability from all of the other abilities since you want to hit often with your character unless you're uh, playing a complete melee build, marksmanship will be an ultra relevant stat. Leadership it is helpful to have one leader in the group, mainly uh, because it also helps a set character to teach the other characters. Um, and generally have an easier time recruiting militia. However, I would say similar as to medical, it is not necessarily required in a squad composition. In terms of physical stats, agility for action points and dexterity for um, a support uh, for marksmanship for better, uh, for better chances to hit, as well as uh, more overwatch uh, shots are definitely the supreme stats here. I personally rank Wisdom relatively high because it allows you to not only detect items but also learn faster. Health is of course important specifically on the higher uh, difficulties and strength will determine the size of your inventory as well as melee damage. So just putting that out of the way, these two are potentially the most important ones followed by Health and Wisdom and then Strength is a, a close fifth in that regard. So just pointing the stats out and also their importance which will influence of course when we're now looking at the mercenaries how the mercenaries would rank individually so let's start with the recruit uh, tier which is where you will specifically on mission impossible recruit most of the mercenaries from and i'll just shortly talk about uh, each mercenary how well they fulfill their role and how their special ability is going to affect your gameplay. Starting with Bobby Steroid Gotanski, uh, our beloved Polish uh, mercenary, who is the only mercenary, uh, the only mechanical mercenary that is having high strength and health uh, values. I think Bobby overall is a mediocre and okay mercenary. He does the job of a, me a mechanical very well. He does have a surprisingly high marksmanship, which is absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, Bobby struggles with low agility and dexterity, which will make him a bit of a liability at the beginning of the game. However, if you spend uh, time to get agility and dexterity up to, say, the 80s for Bobby, he is going to be an absolute madman, a force to be reckoned with. So uh, since he also starts at level one, you do have the freedom of all of uh, the perks that you can pick. And he does come with Mr. Fix, uh, which is reducing the chance for disarms, uh, and which generally is fine. His spe specific ability is Steroid Smash, an unarmed attack. Uh, that is just really not very good. I've tried it often uh, and uh, other melee attacks are better. The biggest complaint that I do have with it is it requires uh, to have free hands. Both of your hands need to be free, so that means minus one weapon slot. Not a good perk. 
Let's move with the uh, mechanics to have direct comparisons. So uh, Sarah would potentially end up in a C, B to C tier type of uh, um, uh, type of area, potentially B tier because he can be made okay. Uh, Lifewire on the other hand is S tier. The only thing that um, potentially downgrades her to A tier is the character itself is absolute garbage. Uh, the, the lines that she's uh, talking is are so oppressive that I can barely handle it. However, uh, she does mechanical very well. She's potentially the best mechanical uh, to start with. She has a wisdom score of 94, which allows her to learn a lot. And if you can train her health and her strength up, which again is going to be her problem uh, over uh, over uh, steroid and work on her marksmanship she's going to be a fantastic mercenary the reason why she is a uh, plus tier um, is because she has the strongest ability reveals all enemies for intel set uh, for sectors that you have intel in this is absolutely the single best ability across all of the mercs because it gives you a free view on all of the enemies cannot stress how good that ability is I've never seen anything close to that it uh, trivializes the game if you're playing with her so use it as your own at your own um, discretion uh, Intel and sector stays so all you need to do is you need to scout regularly once you have scouted all of the sectors uh, around you you will be able to see all of uh, the enemies it slows down the gameplay a little bit she needs a lot of um, training but it is worth it Catalina is the third um, uh, mercenary that uh, would have medical uh, mechanical comes with the lowest mechanical score of the three of them uh, so she's not really excelling in that pretty mediocre stats all around but she comes as a sniper uh, so that in itself is good she has uh, really decent marksmanship agility and dexterity uh, are okay stats for her she really doesn't have anything other than agility going for her so she will be training intensive and with a wisdom score of 48 it's not really good her uh, special attack inevitable strike allows uh, you to bypass armor but guess what snipers already do that quite well so that's not really that good night ops is uh, fine i suppose and uh, she can help the team with morale uh, overall it is an easy to start with Merc because it doesn't require she doesn't require a lot of training, but I can full heartedly say that steroid and lifewire are both better than her once you have trained them up. So that's mechanicals gone. Let's move to the healers. Fox. Fantastic character. Um, both of the healers do have the teaching perk, so uh, Fox me, uh, can teach others faster. Um, and Fox has a great ability called Striking Looks, uh, which allows uh, the enemies to be surprised um, if she starts to snipe them. She also comes uh, with Opportunistic Killer and the idea to run her as an ambidexterity character, plus her weapon swaps are free, so she gets quite a few perks. I think the striking feature for her is 100 dexterity, 85 um, agility, and a sort of okay marksmanship rating that just requires a little bit training. Uh, so the character in itself can pack a punch from uh, from the get-go. She is fine, I would uh, say, uh, and I don't refer to her looks in that case. She's okay. Um, MD, on the other hand, it would be my uh, preferred choice. So Fox kind of B, uh, B tier, MD I would put into A tier. Number one, he has a higher wisdom score, learns faster. Number two, he has all of those perks and passively also can become inspired um, randomly uh, and gain extra AP from it, specifically with high morale. I talked about the morale build. MD is the single character that I would always put a morale build on. He's a great sniper on top of it. Once you get his marksmanship up a little bit, he can actually be a force to be reckoned with. So MD, A tier in my perspective. Moving on to the others. Explosive characters. In this case, we only have Barry. But Barry is definitely an absolute force to be reckoned with. Not only the cheapest character here, but also uh, his passive perk, uh, the Boutique Explosives, will create two shaped charges, which are just absolute uh, grenades on steroid, uh, steroids. I like them. They deal 51 points of damage, have the nice little shaped charge um, uh, uh, explosion 
uh, parameter much better than the normal grenades and he gets two for free so that in itself is great he comes with 90 plus wisdom which makes him a perfect learner his marksmanship is okay his physical stats surprisingly good this character is absolute fantastic value for money and therefore gets an s tier rating really good character which brings us then to the um, dedicated marksmen. Uh, in this case we do have omren Omren um, as a marksman is a bit misleading I feel because uh, marksmen are typically like good marksman characters but his marksmanship for instance is worse than the marksmanship of steroid. Uh, he also does have only moderately good agility and dexterity. His physical stats are all over the place and I don't see why he would not have been classified as an all-rounder and instead as a marksman. I guess it was because of his ability for eyes on the back which sets Overwatch in a circular area instead of a, a straightforward area. Uh, he also comes with auto weapons, which is fine and uh, with distracting shots. So the skills themselves are not bad, but uh, the wisdom is okay as well. But the character really does not have anything outstanding going for him. I would put him solidly under C tier. Uh, the eyes on the back are okay, but uh, very often you don't, don't have problems with the Overwatch cones, so it really doesn't add that much to the character. And the character them, uh, himself needs a lot of investment to get those stats up. Which brings us to the three generalist characters, starting with Mouse, um, who is uh, the first of the three. She doesn't uh, uh, trigger Overwatch which in itself is a good ability. I would say that's one of the better abilities. She has fantastic physical stats, agility and dexterity is great. Wisdom is okay, so that is fine. She comes with a lot of health, so all of that is great. The one downside um, for her is she brings only 70 marksmanship to the table, so you will see a lot of misses at the beginning. She could be a very good backup doctor and maybe even a primary doctor to begin with, but um, I would have loved to see a little bit less leadership maybe and a little bit more marksmanship to just make her a better all-round character. As she stands, I would uh, give her together with her Lightfoot ability potentially a B-, minus, maybe C rating. She's a little bit better than Omrim, but not that much. Now we come to Igor, Igor Dolvich, one of my favorite characters, has a high wisdom, has a high stats in almost everything except dexterity uh, has a high marksmanship and everything else going for him his stats are fantastic he starts with a great uh, full body contact um, skill and sets him really up as a melee character on top of it he has the drink ability which gives him 25 grit um, and further bonus um, to melee damage uh, that in itself is great so with Vajne uh, Zodovnia he can deal a lot of damage from the get-go and if you want to go for a dedicated melee build my Igor at the end was a killing machine he is good at learning I can definitely attest to that I would give him a solid A- minus rating because he just has good sets for the price point where he's coming at which brings us to the last one uh, Grizzly as an all-round character um, he comes in with a lot of uh, health, um, pretty moderate or, or mediocre stats on agility and dexterity and a lot of strength and okay wisdom, okay marksmanship and really a bit of a garage sale in the other skills. Nothing particularly great but nothing bad either. I think he with his specific ability uh, where he can make machine guns attack off the hip and then plant them down and have heavy weapons set up with reduced AP. The idea was to really make a heavy weapons guy but with the nerfs to machine guns and then not really shooting that often from the hip, the actual dexterity and agility uh, will hurt him quite a bit. He is, I would say, a below uh, par character. The perk really doesn't add much to it and despite him being cheap, I do not see a lot um, of potential for him. He starts with killing spree, so maybe you go into kind of a melee route with him. That may be the case. Melee plus heavy weapons could work for him, but he would be really more a C minus uh, character. Um, I don't think that he would match up with the other characters. Now that this has taken a little bit longer, I potentially will do 
a uh, second uh, guide for the veteran mercs and uh, the IMP uh, to review them as well. Let's cover the IMP Merc in this guide and I will do a second guide for all of the other tiers of mercenaries in a much more condensed form. So IMP Mercs, for those of you who are unaware, you can uh, create your own mercenary, just one of uh, them. And uh, the mercenary essentially will not cost any money. It will not start with a perk, but it will start with um, a couple of self-selected um, skills. So. If you go with your IMP, clearly you can build it into many, many different directions and uh, the advantage of the IMP is to be as flexible as possible. You start with 340 ability uh, points, which will allow you if you go for maximum stats to max all of the stats and uh, max one uh, further um, ability such as uh, marksmanship for instance and then put the rest into another ability you could for instance use leadership so this could be a setup of skills that uh, a setup that I see very often because you can train the rest relatively quickly and you're essentially excelling at all of uh, the physical stats equally uh, potent or equally uh, good could be something along the lines of dropping your strength further down um, to 40 and essentially running with a high leadership. High leadership and high wisdom will allow you to teach all of the other mercs incredibly well and fast. So this merc here could uh, basically teach everyone uh, the, uh, the uh, core stats as well as marksmanship and then uh, they need to teach themselves strengths a little bit later. As for uh, the core abilities, like I said, you have a personal perk. Just going through the personal perks really quickly. Psycho allows you additional conversations options, but also um, influences combat. Psycho characters, when they take wounds, will um, actually appreciate that and uh, and not um, disappreciate that. Like other characters, specifically if you get wounded heavily, psycho characters gain additional AP and morale will not drop. So that in itself is good. The second one would be negotiator, reduces the sector operation costs. So if you are uh, mm, worried about money, that is the right way to go. In my opinion, uh, money is specifically with two mines that are um, never, even on Mission Impossible, going to, uh, to go down. Um, the Landsberg mine and uh, the uh, the northern mine um, that you need uh, to be handed over from the rebellion, uh, both of them never uh, will run low. So with that, typically money is not a problem. So the negotiator one is a bit uh, lower on the uh, on the quality list. And scoundrel will always allow you first weapon swap uh, to be free as well as additional weapon conversations. That's actually not too bad. Specifically, if you want to create kind of a melee character, uh, this allows you to uh, s uh, switch between your normal weapon and your shotgun uh, without using um, ability points for that. Then looking at uh, the tactical perks, a couple of combinations that I want to highlight here would be automatic weapons um, plus night ops. That allows you to uh, have better accuracy with burst fire uh, weapons and night ops basically uh, negates the night, um, uh, the night penalty. So that in itself is good. Another combination that is often seen would be martial arts, which improves uh, the accuracy and defense against martial attacks. And then hand-to-hand -hand combat, which allows you to make interrupt attacks in melee range. So that in itself is also not bad. Kind of making it like the Templar in with Bladestorm uh, in XCOM, so that's a good combination. Yet another combination that I'm uh, seeing quite often is Stealthy and Night Ops, so Stealthy just for improved uh, stealth and sneaking, and then basically better uh, kill chances. What you can also uh, do is uh, just make it a, a teachable character. Um, in our case, we want to teach others. This here would increase um, the teaching capabilities even further and select any of the other uh, traits. Um, the other ones are, I think, a little bit less uh, prevalent. Uh, the Mr. Fix isn't used that often. More accuracy um, and at short range is okay. Uh, for shock troopers, you could go something like that. SMGs and more uh, accuracy close quarter training is good. 
Um, and heavy weapons potentially also not that often. Extended throw range is okay and uh, dr drastically reduces the AP cost for the first uh, grenade is also not too bad. So you could use uh, a melee character could also do something like that and essentially use uh, the first grenade throw for free uh, and longer grenade throw up in order uh, to move with the perk. So that's really it. That's uh, the, uh, the IMP. Uh, go to town with them. They are strong and a good extension of your team. Uh, I will uh, record another uh, guide for the remaining mercenaries where I'm just really quickly going over the special abilities. I think this guide here has covered just the core concept of what's important for merc selection. Let's look at the other mercs and their special abilities and how I would personally rank them in the next guide. See you soon and have a good one. Bye bye.